Hey everyone, what's going on? Welcome back with me, Nathan. In this video, I want to show you a new AI IDE that's been released by the Amazon dev team. It's called Kiro. So just yesterday, I found that Amazon just released a new AI IDE called Kiro. It's a fork of VS Code similar to Cursor or Windsurf but with three unique twists added to it. First is the IDE uses a cute ghost hat icon instead of abstract logos which makes it a bit more appealing. Second is that Kiro has a spec feature that enables you to bring structure and order to your coding agent. When you use the spec mode, Kiro will turn your prompt into clear requirements, system architecture, and step-by-step -step tasks that the AI agent will implement. The Amazon team referred to this as spec-driven development, and it seems a powerful way to organize your workflow. And third, Kiro introduced Agent Hooks, a feature that lets your AI agent automatically run when specific events occur, like when a file is created, saved, or deleted. With Agent Hooks, you can scale your work effortlessly, they allow the AI to handle tasks like generating documentation, writing unit tasks, or optimizing performance, all without you having to prompt it manually. Aside from these highlighted features, Kiro also comes with all kinds of features you would expect from an AI-powered IDE such as autocomplete, inline assist, MCP, and chat history with the AI. Now the best part about Kiro is that it's completely free during preview, so you just need to install it, and you can start using the AI Assistant feature right away. It's powered by Cloud for Sonnet by the way, so I think it will be good. They will be adding the price tag in the future, which you can see here on the pricing page, but for the time being, you can try out Kiro without pulling out your credit card. So next, let's get Kiro installed and see if this AI IDE is really that good. Now before we get into the exciting part, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button down below and please help me reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year as it will mean a lot to me making me feel more excited to create useful videos just like this one. Now to get started with Kiro, you simply need to visit its website at kiro.dev and you will see this download button for your operating system. Here it shows the Mac version because I'm on a MacBook, but you should see Windows or Linux if you're on those operating systems. So download and install the IDE and we will move on to the next steps. So here's the welcome screen from Kiro. Here it will ask you to sign in first using one of these options. Notice that this tab is not skippable, there is no skip button here, so let's just do it. I'm going to use Google here. After that, you can import your VS Code config as well as select the team that you want to use. You can also set up the shell command so that Kiro can run from the terminal, but I will skip ahead for now. Once done, you will see Kiro's IDE interface, which must be quite familiar by now. On the main window here, you can open project or clone repository. And on the left side, we have sidebar menus for useful features. And to open the AI chat window, you can click on this chat icon on the top right corner. And here's Kiro chat interface, and there's the autopilot notice here. So autopilot allows the agent to take actions without having to request for approval. I think this is just similar to auto approve in other tools, so let's just leave it enabled for now. And here we have two options for the chat interaction mode. The first is vibe mode, which is where the agent will create files and write code according to your prompt. And the second is spec mode, which is Kiro's unique feature. It will make the AI draft the requirements and implementation strategy first before actually writing the code. As for the model, it seems we only have Sonnet 4 and 3.7 and there seems to be no way to add other models. Well, Amazon did invest in Anthropic, so it's just natural that it will create an IDE specialized in using its AI model. Next, on the left, we have context, which is added using this hashtag symbol. Here, we can add any kind of context like documents, code base, files, folders, and so on. Next to that, we can attach images using this image icon. And on the top right side, we have options to see the task list, chat history, new session, and close this chat window. Finally, let's open the Kira menu on the left sidebar here. Just click on that cute ghost head icon. Um, okay, it seems we need to open a project folder before we can use this menu. So I will just open an empty folder to test it out. And now here's the Kiro sidebar menu. Here we can see four sub menus. There is the specs menu. There's agent hook and then agent steering. I think this is similar to rules and other IDEs. And then there is the MCP server down here as the last menu. 
So that's it for Kiro's special features. The rest of the sidebar menus are just the default from VS Code. We have extensions menu, debug, source control, and then search and explorer. I think we've explored enough for now, so let's move on and test out Kiro's AI agenda capabilities. Alright, let's see how Kiro's spec-driven development works. On the screen here, I already have Kiro open, and on the left side, I have a vanilla Next.js project. This is simply a freshly installed Next.js project with no changes at all. When running the app, we can see the demo page from Next.js here. So now, I want to implement an authentication feature to this project. The authentication will be done using the next auth library, and it will have the ability to sign in and sign out. The credentials will be hard-coded for now to simplify the project a little, and a protected route to dashboard will be added to test the auth. Finally, I tell Kiro to give a thought on how to implement this feature based on the existing project. See that it has Next.js 15, TypeScript, and Tailwind. Press enter here and let Kiro process the request. And now Kiro begins the process by checking if there is an existing specs for this feature. And after that, it will read existing files and begin to write the requirements in a markdown file. Once the markdown file is completed, it will ask you to review the requirements and edit it if you want to. Once all is good, you can move on to the design phase, in which Kuro will write the architecture, the components it will create, and so on. After the design is finished, it will ask you to review the document again, and once everything is okay, you can continue to create the task list. Again, you can review the task list once completed, and after everything is set, you can click the finalize task list button over here. With that, the specs are now completed, and you can instruct Kiro to start the task by going to the task markdown file, and click the start task option on top of each task as shown here. Now, Kiro will start a new chat session, and it will implement the task we selected. Once the first task is completed, we can ask Kiro to run the second task, the third task, and so on. So, this is Kiro's workflow in spec mode. This will take a while, so I will skip ahead to when all the tasks are completed. Okay, so it turns out I can't proceed any further here in task 5. It looks like the task is too complex for Kiro, or the AI model is no longer responsive. As you can see here, I have this unexpected error occurred, please retry message. Now, I have retried for a couple of times by clicking the retry option on the task list here, but each time, I just received the same unexpected error message. Uh, let's look at the chat history here. And now you can see that I have task 5 retried around 7 to 8 times already. And each time, it gets the same error. So maybe the access to Claude is actually limited, I don't know. So I will just cancel here and I will try another prompt that might be easier. Okay, so here I have another Next.js app, and I will ask Kiro to add themes to this app, uh, add a like and dark theme, and allow users to toggle the theme. So just send this prompt, and Kiro will start by creating the requirements file again. We have seen this process before, so I would just skip ahead to the end. Okay, so this time Kiro actually managed to complete all the tasks for this feature. On the editor view here, you can see all the tasks are completed. And if you want to see the app, then here it is. It just add this toggle theme button on the top right corner. Just click on it, and the app will use the dark theme. There are some issues with this result though, as the logo disappears in the dark theme. But that will be okay since this is just a task. But yeah, even in this second prompt, I still encounter some unexpected errors. As you can see in my history here, I have several task 8 locks, because it failed a few times as well. Now, one more unique feature in Kuro is the agent hooks, which enables you to run AI agents whenever an event occurs in your project. To add a hook, you can click on the ghost icon and then click the plus button beside the agent hooks menu here. Now here, you can describe what you want the AI agent to do in the box, or you can select one of the provided template down here. I will select the update the documentation here, and then I just click the submit button. Kiro will create the hook for us, so just wait for a moment. And now the hook is ready. Once the hook is created, it will keep listening for one of these events to occur. We can select either file created, save, deleted, or just trigger manually. Here in the hooks list, we can disable the hook by clicking on this eye icon over here. 
Okay, now let's test this hook. So I will open the package.json file on this project, and then I will change it to uh, remove this fitas package from the list. And then save this file, and here we can see the AI chat box is open, and Kiro is running the hook. So let's see what it will do now. And uh, oops, the hook ends with an error. Uh, yeah, so okay then, maybe I'll just try this again later. But that's how the agent hooks work in a nutshell. Now, there are other features we haven't explored here, such as steering and MCP. So if you all want me to explore these features further, please let me know in the comments below, and I will make a video on them as quickly as possible. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining my YouTube membership where you can use this channel's emojis, get early access to new videos, plus a lot more. So overall, that's how Kiro works, and the concept of specification-driven development and agent hooks are actually quite interesting. Now, one of my viewers asked me to compare Kiro to Cursor. Well, Kiro is actually very similar to Cursor, except for the built-in spec mode and hooks. So if you're having problems describing what you want and make the AI do what you want it to do in Cursor, then the spec mode and hooks could help. But I will say that right now, the spec mode in Kiro is a bit disappointing, as it just returns unexpected errors for several times. While it can provide structure for AI agents with the requirements, design, and task list, the execution is just not that good yet. When compared to Kilo Code Orchestrator mode, then Kilo Code definitely wins, as it can add authentication feature to a Next.js application without any issue. If you want to explore Kilo Code, I suggest you watch my Kilo Code Orchestrator guide video, the link is in the description. And that brings us to the end of this video. So, what do you think about the Kiro IDE? I encourage you to try it out for yourself and let me know about your experiences. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Code with Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify complex tech topics so that you can master them easily. Make sure you subscribe if that's something you find interesting. Make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, all the good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye!